Hi, today I'm going to teach you about the Fourier series. Um, the previous knowledge you should have is calculus and linear algebra. Um, let's start reviewing a little of what you saw in linear algebra. In linear algebra, you saw the vector spaces. For example, I have here examples of R2 and R3. You know, this is a vector space, this is, this is R2, this is R3. R2 is represented with two vectors which are linearly independent, for example, the vector i and the vector j, which is, this is the vector i, and this is the vector j, this is i in j. And you know that any vector and in R2, here is u, can be represented as a linear combination of these two vectors. Uh, and the same is true for R3. In R3, you have three base vectors, in this example, I have these three base vectors, but you know you can have many other base vectors. They only have to be linearly independent. And I can have any vector in R3 represented as a linear combination of, the co of some constants and my base vectors. But, for example, I could have a, also R6. And in R6, a vector would be a linear combination of six constants and my six base vectors. I am representing my base vectors here with an E and my, and my constants with a C. And you can see that I'm starting counting from zero because, well, that you can do that. I can, I can start counting from, from one, so I did that here and here. But you can start counting from zero and it works exactly the same. Because if I start counting from zero, from zero to five, I just fix six things. You can count in here. And the way, the, the, the reason I am writing it this way here is to tell you this that in, if you have some vector space with n dimensions or n base vectors then you, you then you can represent any vector in this space as this summatory you know here, here we have a constant here we have our base vectors and well it's, it's neat to start the summatory from, from zero you always want to start the summatory from zero that's the, that's the reason I'm beginning to, to count. And that's the reason I'm having all my constants here and my base vectors start from zero. And that's also the reason I need an n minus one here. But I, hopefully all of this is making sense. If, if you know how to code, you are all very, or you're already very familiar with this. But the point of all this is just to remember that any vector in some vector, in some vector space it can be represented as this summatory of a constant and your base vectors. Okay? So, let's see. For example, so, uh, a very clever guy, and you might guess that his name was Fourier, was uh, thinking, well, how can I push the limits of what a base vector is? So, he came up with this. He said, I'm going to have uh, uh, my uh, R2 vector space. Uh, this is R2 because this is going to have two base vectors, but my base vectors are going to be x to the 0 and x to the 1, which you know x to the 0 is just x, is just 1, sorry, and x to the 1 is just x. And this is my vector space. But you may be thinking, well, 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 wait a minute, these are not vectors, these are not directions. For example, you can say, well, here I can say that i is just a there, it's an arrow here, but what the hell is 1 here? What the hell is x? Um, well, the way to think about it is that let's let's say that I move in the direction of e to just two units, and that I move in the direction of e one minus one unit. Oh, sorry, I move here minus two units. So what? And I ended up in this point. So this is a vector in my vector space. So what the hell would be would this be? Well, I, I could simply say that this is my vector q. And a q is just uh, minus two times my vector e2 minus one time a vector e1. And so far, this looks this looks like uh, any vector you know. But you you can say, well, wait a minute. I know what e2 and e1 are. I know that e2 is x, and I know that e1 is just one. So this vector, this thing that you say is a vector, looks more like a polynomial than, than a vector. And the answer is that polynomials in this vector space 
are vectors. Or, or maybe clearer, it would be to think that I can choose any point in this vector space. And any point here would be telling me, would be, would be equivalent to some polynomial of this form. For example, if I choose this point, how many units do you think this is like? One, two, this is three units here, and this is one, two, also three units here. So this thing here, I'm going to call it a W, would be three times E1 plus three times E2, and this would be simply three plus three X. This is another polynomial. And I can choose any point here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And all of these points in this vector space are polynomials. It's just a, a graphical way to represent all possible polynomials of these kinds. Because any polynomial you can tell me, it's some, of any polynomial of this form that you can tell me, it's somewhere around here in this vector space. This is what this means. And you might be saying, well, yeah, it's a, it, I, I get that. It's a very good way to represent rapidly polynomials. But how can this be a vector? Like, for example, what about the dot product? And, well, you have a pointer. The dot product doesn't work like it usually does with this kind of base vectors. Well, if I have like, this kind of base vectors, you know how the dot product works. But what if I have this kind of base vectors? Uh, well, then, congratulations, as Fourier once, you have reached a point in mathematics where you can begin making up your own rules. And this might be weird that you can make up your own rules, but remember that the beauty of mathematics is in its freedom. So I can make up any rule that I want, and it's okay as long as I follow that, that rule always. So it is said that, by definition, the dot product is the integral from minus 1 to 1 of one of the vectors times the other vectors times dx. And it is say by definition that if it is zero, then my two vectors are orthogonal to each other. And a lot of times it is say in mathematics that by definition, by definition, but by definition is just a very good way to say because I say so. Because I say this is true. I be, because I say this is the base vector. The, sorry. Because I say that this is the dot product, so and I say that if this happens, then they are orthogonal. I made this whole thing up. This, this is one rule I made up. And I'm going to follow that rule and see what happens, to see what properties, what thing I discover while, while following this rule. And you could tell me, like, well, I'm, I don't like that rule. I don't like this rule. And my rule would be that my, the dot product will be the double derivative of u times uv over dx squared, um, where x is equal to 2. And I am saying that if dot, this whole thing is equal to 0, then they are orthogonal. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe I say that if they are equal to 3, they are orthogonal. I'm making this up. I, I think you could make this rule, and you could Mm, and, and then you would have a vector space which follow, um, and you would, would tell me like, well, following this rule, my vector space has these kind of properties, and that will be right. That is math. You are free to do that. But the thing is that this rule is very useful. This rule, if you follow this rule, then your vector space has some very neat properties. And we're going to see about it. Well, you know that in this vector space, I can represent any polynomial like this polynomial or like this polynomial, but how could I represent in this vector space the natural log of x? I can't. There is no linear combination of 1 and x that can be equal to natural log of x. And it seems like I'm running out of time, so we will continue in the next video where I will, where I will show what does it all has to be? How is it all related to the Fourier series? And um, what I will prove you um, the formulas for the Fourier series.